this is Gerd Leonhardt. Welcome to another edition of Meeting of the Minds. Today I have with me from Sydney, Australia, Ross Dawson, futurist, author, strategist and a good friend. I spend a lot of my time traveling the world, looking and seeing what's going on. I think, you know, perhaps the biggest single trend is this rise of entrepreneurships, rise of startups. There's the big companies aren't going away, but the innovative, the talented, the uh, creative people are all saying, I want to do my own thing. I've got a great idea. And the cost of being able to go from idea to conception to reality to implementation has just been shrunk enormously. So we've seen an extraordinarily rich ecosystem. The last three or four years, if you look at Zurich or Istanbul or Cairo or Bangkok or Melbourne or any of these cities, there's just this flourishing startup ecosystem. So this changes the very nature of business. It's where the activity is happening. Big companies are finding all the best people are going there. If they want innovation, they're having to go outside. So this is seeing this big transformation. We're seeing crowdfunding and other mechanisms and support to be able to create that. So I think we're going to see this more of this economy of startups around the world uh, flourishing as we move forward. I mean, have you been seeing this in your travels? To a large degree, I've seen the same thing. I think what, what is happening is we've seen the shift from uh, you know, you, you had to have the right sort of breeding ground for, for entrepreneurship and, and the right tools and technology. And so now what we're seeing now is clearly it has moved away from saying I need computers to program or a space to plug them in or so. Now it's all about just a, a permission basically to say that you have permission to do something because now you can host something on Amazon for five cents, you know, until nobody uses it. And you can use all these tools and all the information and the code is all there and the APIs are all there and all these things. So being an entrepreneur is, is wide open now. So it has shifted from this idea of the technical or the financial uh, enablement to the mental enablement of being an entrepreneur. This is the only hurdle that we have in Europe. You know, it's, the, it's all here except that we're not allowing ourselves to do it. So it has shifted from, from the tools to permission, you know, and this is a societal problem that permission to play or to experiment, that, that's our biggest problem in Europe. Yeah. I was recently speaking to an entrepreneur in Zurich who said that the Swiss startup scene is like a five-star hotel with nobody in it. All of the ecosystem and the support system is there, but people aren't actually engaging in it. In other countries, which are perhaps where people are a little less comfortable, uh, so, for example, in Southeast Asia or in Chile or in South Africa or so in, we're seeing, or Uganda, we're seeing all sorts of these startups emerge because these are the alternatives they have. So perhaps, perhaps it's being less comfortable, which is going to support more of these uh, ecosystems. Or uh, I think there's, you know, we need to be able to certainly have a changing social attitudes. There's a, the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor Study great data and one of the variables it shows is in each country it shows the fear of failure and how large or how small that is and I think that the fear of failure tends to be higher particularly when people tend to have a, expectations of status and jobs and titles and so on so if we move beyond that fear of failure that's when the opportunities emerge. Yeah this is of course a cultural question you know I think all we would need to do in Europe is to, to, to uh, basically put out a, a one page header in the, uh, in the uh, Herald Tribune or something saying, you know, it's okay to fail. And then all of a sudden we'd have this huge boost of activity. And, you know, in America, you're not a good entrepreneur until you've gone bankrupt at least once. And that, that's a fact. Here, if you go bankrupt once, you, you, nobody can talk to you anymore because you're, you're, you know, you're, you're dangerous. You're like a virus. <laughs> you know, you've, you've lost your spot in the food chain. So this is a, a thing that we really have to tackle here. And this has nothing to do with money or it has to do with this thing. And I think it's also that the, uh, you know, change is driven largely by two factors, which is either pain or love. So you, you have a huge pain and you got to get rid of it. You do something or you fall in love with an idea and you just can't let go of it. Uh, and both of those factors are needed. Uh, and so we have to create the, the reason that I'm going to invent something. You know, there, and this is the reason why all of that stuff is happening in California, because everybody wants to be eBay. Uh, but in Brazil, in Indonesia, in India, in South Africa, people are doing this because they're hungry. If you're not hungry, why do you look for something to eat? <laughs> so this is a, I think it's a key point for entrepreneurship. Uh, as Steve Jobs said, you know, stay hungry, stay foolish. That, that's, that's very true, and, and we have to learn from that, I think. So is there anything that governments or companies or individuals should do to foster a world of more entrepreneurship? 
well, I think in Europe, and I, and I think also for many countries around the world, if you just take the lid off, you know, you take the lid off this pressure thing that says, whatever you do has to be successful, otherwise you're toast. You know? When you remove that lid, they allow people to, to, uh, to try something and to blow something or, or to goof off or to be wasteful, you know, then, then, you, have, then you have enough room. Yeah. Uh, and, and God knows there's many people, I mean, most people fail. Huh? What I see is communities, and it's startups are not based in countries, they're based in cities, and they're based in communities. And the more they're the examples to point to and to look for, which provide support, the more they'll do that. And I think what we're seeing, I've seen in many cities, these emerging networks and communities around startups, anything we can do to be able to support those communities. Well, yeah, we talked about Switzerland, you know, uh, and some other takes. Uh, this is what, I, what would be revolutionary for Switzerland to do, is to say, look, you know what, we are going to become the place like Singapore, but not as state controlled, to where we create this, this huge momentum of where you can come and realize uh, and, and do playful things, create a play park, essentially, which is what they've done kind of in Singapore but with a more sort of strict application to it. Right? But it has been very successful as, as becoming the place, you know, supporting this kind of development of new ideas uh, to create a huge pool for this culturally and money-wise and otherwise. Uh, and this is, would not be hard to do because people like being here. Yeah, I think there's many things can be done, but to recognize that it is a journey. That you know, things don't happen overnight. That there is drawing that, and when it's drawing the right people together, supporting them working together, supporting their visibility globally, that community support is will help build uh, you know the multiple entrepreneurial centers we have in Europe. You know, if if you're looking at this uh, uh, entrepreneurship concept, is it's very much like saying if you go to uh, Rod Stewart or Mick Jagger and you say, "Give me a recipe to be a rock star." There's no recipe to be a rock star, <laughs> you know. You could you could you can learn from how they did it, right? But there's no recipe to being an ent uh, entrepreneur or, or furthering entrepreneurship. You can't copy what the Americans do because it's a very complex ecosystem. What we need to do here is to create the ecosystem in our own way that has enough momentum, and not just one piece. So we don't just give the entrepreneurs a bunch of offices and computers. We have to create the culture around it. You know, the inspiration, the, the attitude, uh, the funding, of course, but also just the, the freedom to be weird, right? which, which Americans have you know, by nature. <laughs> right, so that, we need that here. So this concludes today's episode of Meeting of the Minds. Thanks very much to Ross Dawson for being part of this today. If you want to know more about the show, you can go to meetingoftheminds.tv. We are also taking questions and inputs for the next show. Just use the Twitter hashtag Meeting of the Minds and we'll be responding and trying to work your comments into our next show. Thanks very much for joining us.